uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, the different types of surveying. So first of all, we will see what is a survey, what do you mean by surveying, what is the objectives of surveying, and uh, how uh, it is being described, what the classifications of surveying. And basically, I want to know you from like uh, previous primitive days, in ancient days, uh, how the survey has been done, and uh, today in the uh, modern world, how the surveying has been done, and in future, how the surveying will be done. So those three things we will be covered here, and it's at the same time, surveying on Earth, on the surface of Earth, and also surveying beneath the Earth, and also surveying above the Earth. It is astronomical. So all these things will be uh, uh, covered in this in, uh, in the course of time. So first of all, uh, this PPT uh, contains and the uh, classification of surveying function and also instrument and different uses of survey. So basically survey, survey in, uh, not only in engineering format, in anything, it is nothing but data collection. Yeah, survey is basically a data collection. Survey is nothing but a data collection, irrespective of any field. It can be an engineering field, it can be uh, medical field, it can be political field, anything. Survey, we always we, we listen about survey results, survey results, right? So here, basically, survey means what? We are going to determine the relative position with respect to you, the relative position of the other person. Means like, uh, suppose if you are sitting in a class, suppose if at all you are sitting in, a, in your class and your crush is sitting somewhere else. So some, if the person next uh, beside you, if at all he is asking, where is your crush? Then how you are going to tell him? So either she is on my right side or she is on my left side or else she is a bit uh, two uh, two benches forward from me, or else two benches away from me, or else at a certain angle. Suppose if at all she is sitting, suppose if at all imagine, so she is sitting on my right side and she is at an angle of 45 degrees. Then you can perfectly locate that uh, your crush point. Means nothing but you can locate that point with respect to what we are locating with, re with respect to the distance, means direction and the angle. So based on these two points, you are locating the other point means relative positions you are going to find out and that is on the surface of it and also beneath the surface of it and same can be applied for the uh, objects above the surface of it okay so basically it can it contains distances horizontal angles and in case of uh, height differences vertical distances and vertical angles can be used to prepare a surface so based on these uh, contents, like your distance, horizontal angles, vertical angles, you are going to prepare a map of depending upon the uh, condition. Means whether you are uh, uh, going for a small site to uh, build your own house or else whether you are preparing a map for India or whether you are preparing a map for your city. So depending upon that, the scale will be varying. So basically, Object of surveying. I'm doing the surveying because I'm doing the surveying to prepare a map or a plan. Suppose if at all I want to build my own house, I'm going to uh, go to the site. And I, after going to the site, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the dimensions of the site. I'm going to see where uh, uh, the road is there. Means, uh, means at what the facing of uh, uh, the plot and what is uh, right side to me, what is left side to me, and what is uh, behind my uh, plot. So all this data I'm going to collect. First of all, after collecting the data, I'm going to, uh, based on the directions, I'm going to uh, position my, okay, where where should my hall to be fixed? Where should my kitchen to be fixed? Where should my uh, bedroom to be fixed? And the same way if you take a city, so where the industrial zone to be located, where the residential zone to be located, where the uh, education zone to be located and what are the natural water bodies and what are the uh, lakes that are there and what is the topography of that and today we are going for smart cities so in smart in smart cities so, so what is the water distribution uh, like sewage distribution pipeline distribution you have to all this can be done once if you have a proper map so you have to collect the data and you have to prepare that map and how we are preparing with the gear here we are preparing the positions with respect to some assumed data, means some benchmark. Suppose every city has the benchmark for mean sea level. 
with respect to the sea level at what height the city is being located okay so suppose if you take chennai it is been uh, there is a sea there so it is been at a height of just 5 meters 5.6 meters if you see you know, if you go to any railway station uh, you will be seeing the boards of that particular station right so on that board if you just observe on the left right corner okay left bottom so right bottom corner right bottom corner you can see a small uh, thing written over there msl 5.6 meters chennai suppose hyderabad 530 meters so with respect to sea level at what height my city has been located and all the other uh, uh, buildings or other uh, uh, whatever they require like uh, in that local people they will be taking that uh, 5.6 as reference in chennai that railway station reference in chennai so wherever so with respect to that they are going to take that reference and they are going to uh, relatively calculate the vertical positions and because of that uh, and the next thing is to calculate the areas and volume so as i am going to a site i want to buy uh, some site to build my house so obviously i am going to take the dimensions length and breadth and, and i am going to calculate the area because based on the area only i am going to pay my money right like that and importantly we have to mark the boundaries mark the boundaries like where we need to mark the boundaries like uh, for property fixations i need to mark boundaries for buildings i need to uh, uh, take the boundaries for fields i need to take the boundaries for districts for states for countries so all to make all this kind of boundaries i need survey this surveying is cali is classified in uh, different different classifications are there so based on functions we have these many uh, surveys so uh, some of them we are going to see in detail okay so so and some of them i'll just discuss now so where whatever the surveys i am going to discuss in detail i'm go not going to tell you here but uh, let let us see here so control survey first of all control survey so uh, basically control survey means we are going to fix the reference points we are going to fix the reference points in a widely spaced uh, uh, city or widely spaced area so this is being uh, done by survey of india survey of india is going to fix the some reference point so in that reference point only you are going to consider uh, locally suppose as i said railway station so railway station msl everything is been done by survey of india so that reference point is been taken by the local people to uh, fix their positions okay so survey of india is in uh, actually it has been about 250 years of uh, from 250 years it has been there since the british period and the head office is is located in hyderabad actually so land survey so basically land survey to prepare a map or a scale so then how you prepare your how you plan your own building so that is the land survey so city survey so for the purpose of planning a new city so now we have a, a new capital of amravati so we need to fix uh, everything like uh, you need to take the total data total data of that and uh, you need to uh, divide that into uh, the different different zones so engineering survey so the surveying which has been done for the engineering purpose means for roads for buildings for uh, uh, like water distribution system for the purpose of engineering the surveying that has been done is basically called as engineering survey so all these things uh, we have uh, in the upcoming slides and coming to gravity survey and coming to gravity surveying uh, so where uh, that survey has been done to uh, to know the value of the gravity at that particular point so as you know hydrographic uh, leveling okay so that mercury leveling point so every different place you are going to uh, see that barometric level so how the gravity is been affected okay and the others we are going to see it uh, in the coming slides next classification is based on the instrument that you are using instrument that you are using so one is for linear measurements you require chain surveying for uh, angular measurements you require compass surveying so similarly different kinds of surveyings are there so all these things will be explained in the upcoming slide so let us see the uses of the survey what, what is use of doing this surveying is to prepare it one of the uses to prepare a topographical map which is giving me the information about the topography like such as hills rivers valleys forest towns villages etc and to prepare a cadastral map cadastral map is nothing but uh, fixing the boundaries fixing the boundaries of fields properties plots houses 
So that kind of thing, I need this survey. And to prepare engineering map, where means like to uh, to build something related to engineering, that is buildings, roads, canals, uh, dams, etc. And also the topography means based on the vertical height. Uh, I need to know the vertical uh, uh, alignment, the vertical uh, uh, height of that particular uh, location. So I need to prepare a contour map so that uh, I can prepare the best possible way of road or a canal. Okay, because suppose I'm, I'm planning a canal, in, in that uh, that canal, like I should plan in such a way that the water need to flow by its own gravity. Okay, I need not play against some mortars to just to uh, make the water flow, and on uh, on the hill areas, how to prepare the road, how to align the road, where uh, where it is like uh, which, is, which is both safer and also economic railways, bridges, and also for in case of military purposes, you need to prepare a military map and for geological maps, means which gives us information about the uh, stones and rocks and minerals of that particular location and archaeological maps, etc. Both ways, like whether if you have a map, you have to take that map and you have to go to the site and then uh, there you have to fix the positions and then you have to prepare a map. So either all this can be done from field to map or map to field. If you have a map, it is fine. So you can go to using that map, you can go there. And then using that map, you are going to fix that point. Reference points you have to fix and then you can fix the other points. If at all there is no map, then you have to go to the field and you have to prepare your own map. So basic classification of surveying is plane surveying and geodetic surveying. So plane surveying and geodetic surveying, as uh, uh, everyone knows, like it is an spheroid. It is an oblate spheroid. Okay, it is not generally as you see in your movies or else what is you see in your look. It's not uh, as perfect as you see. Okay, it is a oblate spheroid. Okay, so here you can see something like this. Okay, something like this. So whenever I am considering a small distance. Okay, I'm considering these two small points. Okay, so whenever I'm considering for a small distance, I need not take this curvature into my account. I need not take this curvature into my account. So that is called plane surveying. And whenever I'm taking for a large distance, whenever I'm taking for a large distance, okay, where I need to take this curvature into the account. I need to take this curvature into my account. So this is the basic difference. One of the classifications, basic classification is plane surveying or geodetic surveying. So let us see when when do you call it, it is a plane surveying and when do you call it as a geodetic survey. So and uh, we are not talking about flat earth people. The people who believe in flat earth, I'm not talking about. We are uh, talking about the people who believe in. Uh, so uh, the curvature is ignored, curvature is ignored here, and it is considered to be a flat. Okay, and whenever you join two different points, whenever you join two different points, uh, join two different that is it. Whenever you are joined two different points in a plane surveying, that will be a straight line. And whenever you join the three points. Okay, on a plane, then that will be a plane triangle. Okay, if at all you are taking three points, if you join them, if you join them, that will be a triangle. Okay, so the length is less than 18.5 kilometers and the area is less than, and the area is less than 250 kilometers, that is considered to be a plane survey. That is considered to be a plane surveying when these things all been done by the department railway department. Okay. Okay. So if you consider the curvature into account for even for a small uh, uh, areas, that will be more and more complicated. So it is better to keep it simple to make it easier. And coming to the geodetic surveying. So now we are going to consider the X curvature. Now we are going to consider the X. Curvature, and so this can be done only when 
your area is a very large this means your area is of 250 kilometers and more okay 250 kilometers and more so whenever you are joined two points in this case that is a curved line that is a curved line whenever you are joined three points now it is not a plane triangle that will be a spherical triangle which is a spherical So this is how it will be, look like. So whenever you are considering, it is becoming a spherical angle. Okay. So this is the shape of the Earth. On if the area exceeds, so you need to consider the curvature of the Earth. Okay. So another uh, view. So you can see here whenever uh, you are taking a plane surveying, is surface is considered to be flat here, but here surface is considered to be curved. So these are the basic difference that what we discussed. So based on the area, less than 250, greater than 50, spherical plane angles, spherical angles. Okay, triangle is plane and triangle is spherical. And uh, it is considered two lines if you, when you join, it is being straight. And two lines if you join, it is a spherical. And curvature is taken into account, curvature is ignored. And plane surface we are considering here and we are considering it as a curved surface. So this, you know, uh, I'm not going to take much time, much more time on this. So from here, if you see, so uh, to uh, measure something, I need some instruments. To measure something, I need some instruments. Now I have some instruments, but how uh, it has been done previously, how it has been done, like in the primitive periods, in ancient periods, in Vedic periods, how they have done this surveying. So there, surveying it has been done using the human body only. it has been done using the human body okay so considering their leg heights considering their hands distance of, okay considering their hands that is nothing but paces so suppose example suppose if uh, in your school days you have a assembly what are you going to do you are going to stand in a line so how we are going to stand in a line we are going to maintain a one uh, a hand distance like to uh, for the uh, telling the pledge uh, okay so like one hand distance one hand distance you are going to maintain so that's how it has been uh, done basically so uh, suppose if they want to know about the soil want to know about the soil so what they are going to do is so this is there is some soil okay so previously so they, they are going to dug a hole okay standard uh, some length they are going to take and they are going to take a hole and they are going to fill this with water okay and they are going to fill this with water and as soon as they fill it so this person this person is going to move okay at how many hundred paces okay hundred paces here he is going to move and he is going to come back and after coming back he is going to check the water level is going to check the water level. So based on this, they are going to know about the soil purpose. Okay, one of the uh, method that has, that was used, and uh, in uh, India they use uh, patwaris used to manage this. In India, the uh, patwaris they, they still have the patwaris you know, where they manage the landforms. And uh, hathis, nalis used to be there. Like nali means one nali they are going to take, and uh, that nali in one nali how much rice you are going to put. Okay, so like that. So what happened uh, after? So for primitive days it was okay, but uh, later on what happened is, see, your hand is different, my hand is different, your length is different, my length is different, right? So what happened? So uh, there are going to be errors. There are going to be errors. Okay. So finally, they need some some standard human body to uh, refer this. They need some standard human body. Okay. Nothing but they used to take with the so king okay they are going to take the measurements of the king so king's foot king's hand king's elbow okay they used to take that as a reference and then they are going to mark their fields okay then they are going to divide their fields accordingly okay they are taking they are going to uh, take the reference of the king king's like this one so they used to uh, they'll be taking the king's leg and that reference uh, they are going to take and then they are going to mark their fields so but again later what happened as the king changes, again the length changes because always the king change. So king uh, changes on the, again the length changes. So every time it has been uh, uh, 
we are going to get some results because like uh, in your previously always they need to they people need to uh, live beside the water source whether it is a river okay so beside the water source. so uh, beside the water source they used to have some farms right so every year so during rainy season or due to flooding of the river they used to uh, uh, the marks of the uh, farms uh, going to get vanished so I, every year they need to uh, mark their fields again and again so this kind of uh, uh, changes okay things put here uh, as the king changes the king could change so length will change so again the division of land will change so that is a very big problem so to avoid that finally we got this chain curve okay we got this chain so it is one of the basic simplest to survey okay and uh, this is still being used in even in villages even in rural areas some over there where you they still use the uh, chain surveys okay so along the, during the chain survey along the chain you require ranging rods arrows offsets cross tap etc and uh, based on the length based on the purpose there are different kinds of chains metric chains gunter chains uh, revenue chains engineering chains so like that and also the linear measurement can also be taken with uh, tapes so tapes iron tape inverted tape etc you can take that and uh, coming to the uh, so because of this there are going to be errors so either it may be uh, cumulative errors or it's compensated so to the incorrect change like uh, uh, due to temperature due to pull due to slope and due to alignment due to hypotensional elements there are many errors so whenever you are doing the survey with the chain you have to consider all these kind of errors okay and this is used for only linear measurements so as you discuss when you want to locate a point you need a distance and also angle so in angle both horizontal angle and vertical angle so vertical angles we keep it aside so let us come to the uh, horizontal angles first so horizontal angles can be measured with the two types of compasses that we have so one is surveyor's compass and prismatic compass so it is a bit more accurate than the uh, chain survey okay so and uh, here the angles how do you are going to measure the angles we are going to we should take something as a reference we are going to take something as the reference so that reference is true meridian magnetic north so to uh, so that you are going to take that uh, reference uh, so then you are going to uh, see the angle true meridian magnetic meridian magnetic bearing true bearing okay so whenever you take uh, in the forward direction that is called as core bearing whenever you take the angle uh, on the back side it is called as back bearing okay and surveyor's compass uh, you have quadrantal bearing system whereas uh, prismatic compass you have whole circle bearing system and uh, and survey is compass is very is name itself is telling you is a survey where uh, you don't require any particular tripod for that so you can directly keep that in and you can measure the angles so using the combination of compass and chain surveying is been done initially 